We used to have a tarantula, and it was a tiger rump tarantula. Pretty, pretty cool from Costa Rica. Hey, welcome to... Oh, am I on the wrong page? No, I am on the right page. This is... Yes, this is Chapter 7 for the review test. And we're on number 7. Take a look here. What do we have? Look at... It says, write each multiplication expression in the correct box. Okay. Product is equal to four-fifths. I see. I'm going to look for that one. Do, 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 do. Aha. Do, do, do. There you are. Why did I choose that one? Well, you know what? Eight eighths is really just one. So if you have that times four fifths, well, we know that's one. So one times four fifths is the identity property of multiplication. And therefore, that would still equal four fifths. Now, since product is greater than four fifths, well, something that we've been looking at it wouldn't be this one here. We have something less than. So if you take one third of that amount, we're obviously going to end up with a smaller fraction. In fact, we'll end up with a smaller fraction of both. If you recall, we were doing a video when we uh, one third is actually uh, 0.3 repeating. And then four fifths is going to be, was that point, point 0.8? You know, if you multiply that, you end up with 0.24. So you actually end up with a fraction that's even smaller. Do we have that product is less than four-fifths? That one would fit one-third times four-fifths would be actually less than four-fifths. This is more than one. So this lets us know this product here is going to be greater than one. Four-fifths times nine-eighths. We could even do that over there. Four-fifths times nine-eighths. Sorry, tarantula. And uh, that would be 36 over 40. See, we divide by 6. No, 5, 8, 9, 4. 4 would be 9, 9 tenths. That's really close. The product is great. Oh, it's greater than 4 fifths. Yeah, that's 0. 0.9. That would be true. So I'm going to put that one up here. I better save some room here because I have some other ones. 1 and 1 eighth. That would go there for that reason. This one here, 3 times 4 fifths. That's like taking 4 fifths and adding those 3 together. Oh my goodness, of course that will be greater than four-fifths, so that one would go here too. Three and four, uh, three times four-fifths would go there. So let's look at this one here. So four-fifths times four-fifths. Well, again, we have the same situation we had before. Four-fifths is equal to 0 0.8. When we multiply a fraction that's less than one by another fraction that's less than one, we end up with the product that is less than both of the uh, factors here. In this case, we would end up with uh, 0.64. So we end up with even less than 4 fifths, which is 0.8. So this one here would be less than 4 fifths. So I'm just going to draw a line here so we can put our 4 fifths times 4 fifths here. And the last one here is 4 fifths times, uh, oh, okay, well, here's another one that's the identity property right over here. So this one's going to go 4 fifths times 2 over 2. I don't know. I think we covered it. I think we're good. Double check some of my work here. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Thank you kindly. Let's move on down. Yeah. A postcard has an area of 24 square inches. Two enlargements of the postcard have areas of 54 square inches and 96 square inches. In each postcard, the length is one and a half times the width. Which of the following could be the dimensions of the postcard or one of the enlargements? Mark all that apply. Okay, a wonderful thing where we say mark all that apply. It could be more than one. Well, first thing we need to understand and we've reviewed, and that is that area equals length times width. That's pretty simple that regard if we're doing square units. So 6 inches by 9 inches is going to equal 54 square inches. And here we have 54 square inches. It also says that, I don't know if they're trying to trick us here, but it says in each postcard the length is one and a half times the width. 
So if the length here is going to be 9, is the length 1 and a half times that? Well, 1 and a half times means it's going to be this and then a half more. So 6 could be the 1. Well, what's half of 6? 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. So this would be true. This is a true statement because 9 is 1 and a half times the size of 6, and 6 times 9 is 54 square inches. All right, come to B. 10 times 15. Well, these are nice. Power of 10. 150 square inches? No. Nowhere on here at all. So sorry. 8 inches by 12 inches. Well, let's first multiply them. 8 times 12 is 96. We do have an enlargement, 96 square inches. Is 12 one and a half times the size of 8? It is. 8, half of 8 is 4. 8 plus 4, 12. Yes, that is true. It is one and a half times. So far, we have two. Are we going to get some more? 6 inches by 12 inches. Well, 12 times 6 is 72 last time I checked. We do not have one for 72. Okay, you're out of the running. So sorry, so sorry. 4 inches by 6 inches. Yeah, 4 times 6 is 24, 24 square inches. Oh my goodness, 3 answers for that one. Okay, let's look at question 9. Okay, here it says, in a 5th grade class, 4 fifths of the girls have long brown hair. Of the brown haired girls, 3 quarters of them have long hair. Of the girls with long brown hair, 1 third of them have green eyes. Oh my goodness, this problem is pure trickery here. All right. Well, it says, what fraction of the girls in the class have long brown hair? Well, we already know if we were to, if the question just said, what fraction of the girls in the class have uh, brown hair, we would say, oh, that's four-fifths. They gave that answer. But what they haven't given it to us is those that have the brown hair and that have long hair. Because it doesn't tell us that. It just says three-fourths of that amount. So what we simply need to do is just say, well, what's three-fourths of, which means multiply, of four-fifths? And you can see we get 12 twentieths. And a great equivalent fraction, if we take uh, divide a 4 out, we end up with 3 fifths. So 3 fifths of the girls have long brown hair. Now, of the girls with long brown hair, one third of them have green eyes. Well, this is where we're going on part B. What fraction of the girls in the class have long brown hair and green eyes? Well, in that case, then what we're going to do is we're going to have to find, we're going to take the 3 fifths, so we're going to take one third of 3 fifths. One third times three fifths is three fifteenths, which is equal to one fifth. If you divide out a three, that would be one fifth. Do oh, it actually says explain how you found your answer on this one here. Okay, well, I would probably say, you know, in, in part A, this is what we did. You know, I multiplied the the three fourths and four fifths to get three the three fourths right and four fifths to get three fifths. That was to find out how many girls actually had long brown hair. Well, I know that, that one-third of those girls have green eyes, so I could multiply to find the fraction of the girls with the long brown hair uh, with that, what I did right here, one-third of three-fifths and that. I'm going to go ahead and type this out here for you, and I'm going to do it in like three seconds. And there you go. And done. Woohoo! Let's look at question number 10. This is Caleb's family room has the dimensions shown. Okay, five and a quarter yards by three and seven eighths yards. Okay, he needs to find the area of the room so that he knows how much carpet to buy. Complete the area model below to find the area of the family room. All right, I like the area model. We've done this before. So here we have our three and seven eighths yard here showing this is the width. So I'm going to put this, remember, three plus seven eighths. Oops. And then the width I would put here, down here, or it's actually showing this amount. So maybe I need to put that up here. I think I do. So I'm going to put up here 5 plus 1 quarter. And, and that's what's being multiplied. So on this part of the area model then is the 3 times 5. 3 times 5 equals 15. Now here I have the 7, 8 that's being multiplied with the 5. So I have 5 times the 7, 8, 35 over 8. Now here I have 7 eighths is going all the way across to 1 quarter. So here I would have 7 eighths times 1 quarter, which here would equal 7, 30 seconds. Then here I have my 3 times the 1 quarter, and that's going to just equal 3 fourths. Now if I add them all together, I should be able to get the answer. Here uh, I have 15. I have 15 plus. These are called partial products. I'm going to go ahead and add those together. Uh, look at, this is great. Look at 
32 as a common denominator. So I'm just going to bring down my 15, put my 32, make it easy, times 4. Okay, so that would be 4. So it's 35 times 4. 2012 looks like 140. Plus, this is going to be 7 and 30 seconds plus. And here with my common denominator, it's going to make that times 8. So I'm going to make that times 8, which can give me 24. Okay, keep bringing numbers down, 15 plus. And add across here, I have 140, that's 147. So basically 147 plus 24, we have 171 over 32. Now obviously I can get some holes out of there. I don't know how many times 32 will go in there. I'm just going to use 30, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. Won't go into quite 180. So it's going to go in there at least five times. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply what 32 times 5 is. And that's 160. So that's going to leave 11 left over. So I have 11, 30 seconds. So my answer should be uh, 5, oh no, I didn't add them. Ooh, double check. That's right, so I'm at 20 and then 11, 30 seconds. I hope that's right. I believe it is. Double check, yeah. I'm going to write that in here then. So 20 and 11, 30 seconds. Awesome. Okay, now down here, we have Doreen lives three quarter miles from the library. Okay, almost one mile away, not quite. She lives one third as far away from the library as Doreen. This gets tricky when you use that one third as far. You know, whenever you hear that as far, as much, you should give you an uh, indication that you're going to need to multiply because it's of that amount. Okay, so Sheila lives one-third as far away from the library as Doreen. So for numbers 11a through 11c, choose yes or no to answer each question. Does Doreen live farther from the library than Sheila? Well, good question. She's three-quarters of a mile away, and she's one-third as, as, one as far. Well, no. Doreen lives farther from the library than Sheila. Yeah, that's true. I'm sorry, yes. I was saying that the wrong way there. Okay, so we have yes. Does she live one quarter mile from the library? Well, let's find out because this is Doreen. And remember, we're multiplying. We're going to find out as far. Now, whether you take one third of three quarters or three quarters of one third, we learned, we still get the same product. So we end up here with three twelfths, which we can find an equivalent fraction of one fourth. Yes, that's absolutely true. Sheila does live a quarter mile from the library. And so that shows us that Sheila lives closer. Does she live twice as far? From the library from Doreen? Of course not. That's silly, right? I can see why they're trying to do the twice because a quarter, maybe a quarter and a quarter, three times as much. But Doreen definitely lives three times as far as as, uh, as Sheila. Because if you take one quarter times three, that gives us our three quarters. Although that wasn't part of the problem. So Tanika took a test that had 20 multiple choice questions and 10 true false questions. She got nine tenths of the multiple choice questions correct. Hey, Way to go. And she got four-fifths of the true-false questions correct. I don't know. I'd say Tanika did pretty well. So how many multiple-choice questions did Tanika get correct? Interesting. Okay, great question. Because it's telling us a fraction of how many she, but it does not give us the number. So how do we figure out the number? Well, let's look at that. If we have, we're trying to figure out what 9 tenths then is of 20, because there's 20 questions. And she... And I'm just going to write it this way here first. She got 9 tenths of the 20 correct. Well, now we could put this and just simply multiply this by 20. We usually just do the 9 times 20, but you know what I see? Yeah, I think you see what I see. I see a common factor of a 10. I'm going to divide that 10 out and put a 1. I'm going to divide that 10 out and put a 2. That just leaves me with 9 times 2, which is left over. How easy is that? 18. So that means that she got 18 out of the 20 questions correct. Okay, that's a 90%. Not too bad. Good job, Tanika. All right, um, how many true-false questions did Tanika get correct? Well, true-false, if we look up here, it says four-fifths. Well, four-fifths just so happens to be 80%. That's pretty good, too. But how many correct is that? Probably already know. But let's go ahead and do our fraction anyway. It says if she got four-fifths of them, that's four-fifths, remember, of our 10, or just simply four-fifths times 10. I'm going to go ahead and divide out those common factors. That's 5 divided by 5, which is 1. 10 divided by 5, which is 2. 4 times 2, 8. There you go. She got 8 questions correct out of the 10. And then you can see that is 80%. Woohoo! Nice, huh? Our video, it has come to a close. I know. Don't cry. Please don't cry. There'll be another video very soon. <laughs> now, my friends, live long and prosper.